Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to talk about the math order of operations using HTML and JavaScript. The math order of operations are a universal concept across all equations. This is not unique to JavaScript or even to algebra. Here's my HTML page. I started out with the HTML5 doc type statement. I've got a comment with my name and the current date, and then the required HTML tags. And if this looks like gibberish to you, don't worry. We cover this thoroughly in our opening Web 110 HTML and CSS class. But just to summarize, we have our required head section and body section. The head section is information about the page. Here's my title, Order of Operations. It's in the tab here in my browser, Order of Operations. And then here I have seven paragraphs in my body section, which equate to these seven paragraphs in my web page. In each paragraph, I'm going to do some math operation. Add, subtract, multiply, which is usually the asterisk in all the languages, divide, exponentiation, and then I've got two equations that have multiple operators in them. And that is the subject of this short screencast. In what order do the operators get evaluated in a formula, in any expression? In each paragraph, I have an opening and a closing span tag and in the opening span tag, I have identified, ID'd each of these spans with answer 1 through answer 7, which will connect this particular HTML element with my JavaScript in a second. But just to show you that this is a live page, I'm going to put some dummy placeholder text between my span tags. I'm going to save my page and refresh my web page and prove to you that this web page is definitely connected to this browser. Right now I've got my JavaScript enclosed in comment tags just because I wanted to temporarily disable it. That's a great little technique for when you're troubleshooting or debugging code that you don't want to delete but you simply want to disable. And so I'm going to delete my comment tags now and look at this JavaScript. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different variable statements. The first three are simply setting a variable num1, num2, and num3 to a number. num1 is set equal to 10, num2 is set equal to 5, and num3 is set equal to 2. And then I have seven resulting variables that either add, subtract, multiply, divide, do exponentiation, or do an expression that includes more than one operator, which is the main topic of this little screencast. When I save my page and refresh it, all of these answers get popped into my web page. And that is because the JavaScript is talking to the HTML with these seven statements. And again, do not worry if this code doesn't make sense to you right now. We'll cover this type of JavaScript in the first week of our JavaScript Web 114 class. But to debunk this real quickly, here's a typical JavaScript statement. Document means the web page document itself. Get element ID means go find the HTML element that has the ID of answer 1. And again, I've given ID answer 1 through 7 to these seven spans in these seven paragraphs. Go find that element and set its inner HTML property, which is what goes between the opening and closing tag, to result 1. So 10 plus 5 is 15, and that goes on the page. Answer 2, which is sitting right here, your inner HTML property, what goes right between the tags, is set to result 2. And what is result 2? It's num1 minus num2, 10 minus 5. So here we have 10 plus 5, 10 minus 5, 10 times 5, 10 divided by 5, 10 to the fifth power, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. That's 100,000. And then number 1 plus number 2 times number 3. Let's see, that's 10 plus 5, 15, times number 3, which is 2. So 10 plus 5 is 15 times 2, we might have expected 30 here instead of 20, but instead we got 20, and that's because of the order of operations. So let's get to the main subject of this screencast. We're going to talk about the order of operations, and there's a wonderful memory aid which gives you the four rules for the order of operations. Rule number one is the P of please, parentheses. So what you want to do when you encounter a formula that has more than one operation is look for the parentheses and do that first. Seeing none, you get to go to step two. Step two is exponentiation. 
Now exponentiation in JavaScript uses this math.pow function and we do not see any math.pow for power either one of these formulas. So we get to go to step three. Step three is multiplication and division. Because we remember that division is simply multiplying by one over the number. So both of these operations represent the same thing. We're either multiplying by the number or we're multiplying by one over the number. That's the MD, my dear, in our PEMDAS mnemonic. If we go through our formula, we can see, oh, great, we finally have a rule that applies. We have multiplication, so that has to happen first. So the result of this formula would be, at this point, result 6 would equal num1 plus, we're going to leave that alone, and do this in step 3. And num2 times num3 is 5 times 2 is 10. The last rule then takes care of our other operators. It's addition and subtraction. And again, this happens in the exact same step because subtraction is simply adding the negative of the number. So these two operations are the exact same thing. We're either adding a positive number or we're adding a negative number. So addition and subtraction happen in the same step just like multiplication and division happen in the same step. Continuing on, we see that the result 6, after we take that last step of adding and subtracting, num1, which is 10, plus 10 is going to equal 20. And that's exactly why we get 20 for both of these equivalent formulas. Anytime you build an equation that has multiple operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, power, you're going to want to know the order of operations to see how that's going to play out. If you wanted to override the natural order of operations, that's where the number one comes in, the parentheses. If we really wanted to add num1 and num2 together before we multiplied by num3, all we'd have to do is put those parentheses in. The resulting step would look like this. The first time we went through the formula, we'd see, oh, parentheses, that's number one. Let's do that first. So num1 plus num2, 10 plus 5, is going to be 15 times num3. And then the second time we go through the formula, we only have to go through it two times, not four times, because we can skip exponentiation. We have none. And we can go to the next step, which is multiplication and division. 15 times num3, which is 2, is going to give us 30. So if I save this page and refresh, we can see that the first equation follows a natural order of operations resulting in 20 and the second equation also follows a natural order of operations but step one kicks in parentheses so that happened first which gave us a completely different answer so I really should go up here in my HTML and modify my text to clarify that those are indeed different formulas now number one plus number two is being added first in the second equation but the multiplication is happening first in the natural equation that has no parentheses. So that's the order of operations. Let's just change one of our numbers here just to see the glory of JavaScript now. Let's make num120. Save, refresh, and all of my values have changed. And if that is even slightly exciting to you, welcome to my world. I hope to see you at JCCC and either of my classes that teach this material, Web 110 for HTML and CSS cascading style sheets, and JavaScript 1 is taught in Web 114. You can take both of those classes your very first semester at JCCC. But please excuse my Aunt Sally, PEMDAS, the order of operations. That will help you in every class. Thanks.